In my previous videos, you've learned how atoms, or rather ions, bind to each other in ionic compounds with ionic bonds. You've also learned how atoms in metals bind to each other. But there's so much more to matter than salts and metals. I mean, there's water, there's air, there are trees, animals, humans, you and me. How do the atoms bind to each other in us? Well, that's what this video is about, covalent bonds. We'll start by looking at our dear old periodic table, and in particular these elements. What do they have in common? I might have said this before, but in pure form, they appear as diatomic molecules. That means that if we have pure hydrogen gas, it consists of hydrogen molecules in which there are two atoms. That's why hydrogen is spelled H2. The same is true for nitrogen, N2, as well as oxygen, O2, and all the halogens, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, and perhaps also At2 and Ts2, but we currently know too little about these elements to be sure. Why is it like that, that these molecules are diatomic? The answer lies in how the atoms bind to each other, with covalent bonds. Let me explain by looking at the hydrogen atom first. Now, as chemical reactions take place, as a good rule of thumb, one can say that the atoms try to get noble gas structure. How can a hydrogen atom get noble gas structure? Let's draw a hydrogen atom here. In its simplest form, it consists of a proton and a single electron. Now, there are essentially three different alternatives. First of all, the hydrogen atom may take up an electron to form a hydride ion, H-. Since the hydrogen atom only has one electron shell, the K shell, and there's only room for two electrons in the K shell, it is now full and has noble gas structure. Another alternative is to give off an electron and form a hydrogen ion H+, like this. Well, yeah, there are no electrons at all right now, but it is still a possibility and it occurs quite often. The third alternative is that the hydrogen atom may borrow an electron from another atom. In this way, it forms a covalent bond. How does it do that? Well, let me show you how a hydrogen molecule forms. Now, you don't have to draw this just yet. Just follow along and I'll tell you when it's time for you to copy something to your notes. Here, we have a hydrogen atom, one proton and one electron. Here, I add another hydrogen atom with its proton and electron. I also write the chemical symbol for hydrogen below the drawings, like this. When they react with each other, they may borrow an electron from one another. They both join, and I draw them instead like this. Now, when bonds form, energy is always released, so I add this to here. When the two atoms share an electron pair like this, they form a bond between them. Since the atoms share a pair of electrons, this type of bond is called an electron pair bond. And since the two atoms are now joined, we write them as a hydrogen molecule, H2. Why does this bond form? Well, since this is only an introductory chemistry course, I'll simplify quite a lot and say like this. Because the two atoms now share two electrons with one another, they may both pretend that their outer shell is full. That is, that they have noble gas structure. The hydrogen atoms share an electron pair, which is called an electron pair bond. It is also called a covalent bond, because they both share the electrons completely equally between themselves. Now it's time for you to take some notes too. We draw the formation of a hydrogen molecule, H2, like this. One hydrogen atom with its proton and electron, plus another one forms a hydrogen molecule like this. Note how they share electrons with each other. And since energy is always released when bonds form, I think it's a good idea to add energy here too. Let's also write the chemical symbols for hydrogen and the hydrogen molecule H2. Now, this is called a molecular formula. We can also describe the hydrogen molecule with a Lewis dot structure, also known as an electron dot structure. In this structure, we write the bonding electrons here between the hydrogen atoms. We may also replace the electron pair with a dash, like this. This is called a Lewis structure or structural formula. In a structural formula, each dash represents an electron pair bond. 
and since there's only one single electron pair in this bond, it's also called a single bond. So this is the reason why hydrogen molecules are diatomic. A covalent bond forms between the two atoms. Now let's look at chlorine and how to draw the Lewis dot structure for the molecule. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, which we draw like this. Now I draw another chlorine atom right beside the first one. The gray chlorine atom now has noble gas structure because it has borrowed an electron from the blue chlorine atom. It has eight valence electrons, just like the noble gases except helium. Likewise, the blue chlorine atom has noble gas structure since it has borrowed an electron from the gray chlorine atom. The chlorine atoms now share an electron pair and this is why chlorine is a diatomic molecule. We thus write its molecular formula Cl2 and its structural formula Cl-Cl. Now let's find the Lewis dot formula for oxygen, O2. An oxygen atom has six valence electrons like this. For an oxygen atom to get noble gas structure, it has to borrow two electrons from another atom. And luckily, here's another oxygen atom with two electrons to lend. You see, by sharing two pairs of electrons, both the gray oxygen atom and the blue one gets noble gas structure. The molecular formula is O2, and we write the structural formula like this. There are now two dashes in the structural formula to show that the oxygen atoms share two pairs of electrons. This is called a double bond. We'll also examine the Lewis dot structure of a nitrogen molecule. Now, nitrogen has five valence electrons. This means that in order to get noble gas structure, it must borrow three electrons from somewhere. Let's move these electrons to one side of the atom. Now, it is perhaps clearer that a nitrogen atom may share three electrons with another nitrogen atom like this. Now the nitrogen atoms share three electron pairs. The molecular formula is of course N2, but in the structural formula we write three dashes between the nitrogen atoms to show that there are three electron pairs between the atoms. This is called a triple bond. In the final part of this video, I would like to show you why polyatomic ions have the charge that they do. We do this by looking at the bonds in polyatomic ions. Atomic ions, they consist of only one charged atom, or rather ion. Polyatomic ions consist of two or more atoms, and together they form a charged particle. Between ions in an ionic compound, there are ionic bonds. But between the atoms in a polyatomic ion, there are covalent bonds. Let me show you what I mean by considering the Lewis dot structure of a sulfate ion, SO42-. The sulfur atom has six valence electrons, which we draw like this. Now, there are four oxygen atoms in a sulfate ion, and we draw them one by one. Oxygen also has six valence electrons, and by borrowing two electrons from the sulfur atom, it gets noble gas structure, like this. Let's add another oxygen here, with its six valence electrons. It also gets noble gas structure, since it borrows two electrons from the sulfur atom, and gets eight valence electrons. The third oxygen atom, with its six valence electrons, also gets noble gas structure by borrowing two electrons from the sulfur atom. But the sulfate ion has four oxygen atoms, remember? We add the fourth oxygen atom here. In this way, the sulfur atom gets noble gas structure, see? It now has eight valence electrons. But what about this poor oxygen atom here? It needs another two electrons to get noble gas structure. And it actually grabs two electrons when the sulfate ion is formed, like this. Now the oxygen atom also has a noble gas configuration, and in total, the sulfate ion is 2 minus, because it has two extra electrons. One final polyatomic ion, the carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus. Why is it 2 minus? Well, we can see if we study its Lewis dot structure. The carbon atom has four valence electrons, but I'm going to draw them like this right now. Now I can add an oxygen atom here. Since it borrows two electrons from the carbon atom, it gets noble gas structure. We add a second oxygen atom here, which in the same manner gets noble gas structure. Now let's think about the carbon atom for a while. 
From the beginning, it has four valence electrons. It does have to borrow another four electrons to get noble gas structure. So far, it has borrowed zero electrons. But the third oxygen atom may provide the four electrons needed, like this. See here? The carbon and the oxygen atom here actually share two electron pairs. This means there's a double bond between them and the carbon atom gets noble gas structure. But as you can see, the third oxygen atom still needs another two electrons to get noble gas structure. When the carbonate ion forms, it grabs two electrons. And when it does, this oxygen atom also gets noble gas structure with eight valence electrons. And as you can hopefully see now, this is why the carbonate ion is two minus. It has two extra electrons. As always, you can now read more and check your learning on my homepage. You'll find links in the description.